You're anointed right now, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
trying to be initiated in a gang that gets them to ultimately either in jail or the cemetery. But they are in the service tonight. You are here tonight. You're the best place in the whole wide world. I believe there is a song that says the safest place. Maybe somebody over here may know it. The safest place in the whole wide world is in the club. Oh, I said it wrong, didn't I? Is that the, is that the, the, all of the places that the secular world has to offer? I said all those are wrong, but the safest place is in the well. The will of God. You want our young people to know that, that God is real. You see us dancing and shouting, but I want you to know for yourself that Jesus is real. Amen. And so we're excited about this, our aim. All week we've been praising the Lord, having a good time. Didn't we enjoy Pastor Sanders on last evening? And the Sunday school. And uh, the, I believe it was the evangelism. Amen. We're so happy. At this time, I think I need to come again. Okay. Amen. But I'm going to relinquish my stand. I've said enough. You didn't come to hear me anyway. Amen. We come to see these young people go forward in the Lord. Isn't that right? So I said, greetings to you. Look at your neighbor. Said neighbor, you at the right place at the right time. Tell us that something good is getting ready to happen to you. Oh, I don't think you can miss them. Said something good is getting ready to happen to you. Now look down and say, now how you doing?
Testing. Superintendent Robert Robertson, to the eight chairman, Thaddeus Rogers, President Elder Malone, and everyone in their respective places. Joshua 24 and 15 says, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods of the Amorites and whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. If you would allow me to use the subject today, serving God. I'm going to break this scripture down. It means to do what he says in a way that makes him look supremely valuable in himself. It also means to submit to him in a way that makes him look thrilling, which simply means to do good works for the Lord. There are ways to submit to God that only makes him look threatening, not thrilling. There are ways to do what he says that call attention to the fact that he is an authority, not a treasure. That kind of service is not the service God commands. Come on. Now you might be wondering, what's the difference? The difference is that God told us not to serve him as though he needed anything. Yes. Acts 17 and 25 says, Nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. Serving God doesn't just mean he wants a friendship, but it means he wants a relationship. Yes. Friendship is the relationship between two individuals who do not depend on each other for making decisions 
While the relationship is the way in which two people are connected to each other. If you want to serve God, you must have a relationship with Him so you can be connected and can depend on God when you are in a bad situation. I remember a story in the Bible about a man named Samuel. Samuel served God. Samuel was a man chosen for God. Samuel loved God. And he always also obeyed God without question. His integrity prevented him from taking advantage of his authority. Samuel first loyal to God, to God, regardless of what people or the king thought of him. I don't know about you, but I believe Samuel knew some benefits of serving God. If you would allow me for a couple of minutes to give you some benefits of serving God. <laughs> serving allows us to experience miracles. In the Bible, Jesus went to a wedding, and the couple was running out of wine for the guests. Jesus decided to turn the party up a couple notches. He tells the servant to fill several big jars with water. When they served the water to the guests, the water turned into wine. The guests never knew what happened, but the servants were the only ones who witnessed the miracle. Number two is serving helps us be more like Jesus. When you serve, you shift your focus off yourself unto others. Look at your neighbor and say, shift your focus. Shift your focus. When, you sh when we shift our focus, we begin to see others as Jesus sees them. Yes. Number three is serving the Lord with cause and answer prayers. God hears and answers prayers of those who stay close to him, walk with him, and also serve him. If you serve God, he will bless your bread and water. If you serve God, he will take away your sickness. If you serve God, you will have a long life. If you serve God, your enemies will turn away from you. There is no man, no woman, no girl, and no boy who serve God and walk away empty-handed. Second, 
showed up. They showed up and they showed up. So we and Superintendent um, Warren Robinson will be doing our Jew Jamboree, and you know he's really good at that. So let's everybody be prepared to uh, bring your posters, your banners, and everything else. Right now, we're going to do, El Malone and I decided that we need to show some appreciation to the leaders. So tonight, we're going to uh, ask Sister Underwood. Is Sister Underwood here? Sister Underwood has come all the way from the to the Greater Bay District for traveling the greatest distance. President Jose Malone, Shirley Charlotte Jacobs, 
you may be selected. Yes. Amen. All of the partners, I want all the partners to start doing this. Yes. Select the people that's in your group that's doing just like my sister Griffin is doing. Yes. And give them awards. Yes. Give them awards. Yes. And let them know that we appreciate them working. All of our youth workers, which is work with the young people, would you stay? And all youth yes. leaders that work with young people, would you stay? Yes. I want you to do better. I want you to do better than give these folks a thunderous applause. Because it really takes, it really takes patience. Amen. It takes patience to work with our young people. And it's got to be somebody who's not nervous. You <laughs> can't be nervous and work with young folks. He'll <laughs> medicate you, but this, 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 is, this is outstanding, this is outstanding, this is wonderful, this is wonderful. We applaud our young people, amen. Look at somebody tell that all the young people are not bad. Only imagine what's about to happen when we tell these middle school I have to lose. We are excited. We are excited. We are excited.
and we will be uh, focusing on the next generation. Help me say next generation. Amen. 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 Mother has planned this so well, and we need to be here to support. 6.45 that afternoon, we will be in intercessory prayer again, and then the 7 o'clock convention and worship. And uh, the symposium on um, on Thursday night, as always, we'll be focusing on our men. Amen. And our men always bless us. Is that right? Yes. So you need to be here to show your support for our men on Thursday night. Amen. And the Thursday uh, day of time uh, will be your, your choice. And then you know that on Thursday night, we wear what? Amen, because our illustrious bishop will be addressing the women's convention, is that right? And we're going to be here to hear what the Lord will give him to say unto us. And he'll be saying Friday. Friday. All day Friday night is going to be a grand celebration. Amen. We will start again at 9 o'clock, 9.45 a.m. We'll be in our official day service. That's on Friday. So if you wait and come at 12 o'clock, we might be dismissing. So get here early. Get Help me say, get here early. Yeah. Amen. Amen. 9 o'clock if you can. If not, uh, Charlotte, they're after. Uh, amen. Thank you, Mother. On Friday, Friday morning, Mother will be in her licensing ceremony on Friday morning. So I think we had about 20 missionaries that uh, passed the test. So they will be going up for licensing. And let's give it up for them. It's good to know that, um, um, say what? Oh, okay. I thought. It's good to know that there are those that are still interested in the work of the Lord. Is that right? Amen. And then we know that we always celebrate with Mother doing her dinner, so we want you to come prepared to stay for that as well. And then help me say Friday night. Friday night. Amen. Friday night is going to be a wonderful night. We're going to celebrate our state supervisor on Friday night. And possible. Starting tonight, go ahead and turn your money in for your tickets. Don't sit up. All right. July the 23rd through the 28th. What's happening, everybody? Where are we going, everybody? It's going to be what? Heaven on what? All right. 
It's going to be awesome. Now, on Wednesday night, Wednesday night, it's going to be emphasis again on the youth. Now, y'all praise God again for the youth. We're going to have day sessions and evening as well as then into the worship service. Uh, George Rogers, Evangelist George Rogers, this is always emphasizing the speaker for, you know, speaker for Wednesday night. And uh, this already is said, Brother Harris, y'all heard tonight, he's going to be an inspirational speaker. <laughs> at 6 o'clock, there's going to be a special symposium emphasizing, uh, highlighting as well. So, something is planned for all pastors. Pastor Hobson, the new chairman of the Pastor of the Elders, recently uh, elected. So there will be day sessions as well as evening sessions. The day session is going to start with morning manner at 9 o'clock. Now Scott said meet him at 8 to get ready for 9. But it's going to start at 9 o'clock. And then the clinic will start at 10 o'clock. And then at 6 p.m. will be a special session. And then the service started at 7.30 each night. So let's make note of that. And then on Thursday night, we're going to recognize and show appreciation to the life of Bishop Lindsay, all that he has done in this area. So we're going to recognize him. Let's pray God for our leader and we continue to recognize Bishop Lindsay wholeheartedly. Now, Bishop Withers and the Arkansas First Jurisdiction will be guests on that night. On Friday night, General Board member coming in representing the National Church is the Bishop Dave Group Shear. He'll be preaching on Friday night. And then on Thursday, I mean Saturday night is gonna be that to have a musical. Huh? What? You know, the devil get really upset whenever they start singing. You know, that's the only time the devil get really upset. Because, you know, he get upset because something, you know, you, you ever had somebody you thought they took your job? And, 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 you know, you know, you took my job. That's my job. Every time I see you, I can't stand you. So every time the choir start praising God and singing, the devil say, y'all took my job. You get mad every time. That's why praise and worship is the time to declare war. It's not entertainment. So it's also going to happen on that Saturday night again at the convocation. And then, of course, we're looking forward to hearing our leader. Come on. We look forward to hearing him speak to us every year. He has continued to have a message for this message. My first time hearing Bishop Anderson preach, he was 26 years old. So I wonder how old was I? But he had a lot of hair, but I just remember him preaching in camp. And then ever since that time, because I didn't know they had young people like that can preach, because I'm from Lake Village. And it's Ella Floyd. And then when I and so Ella Anderson is the first young man that influenced me in this church. He is still influencing me and influencing us. And we are going higher and higher and higher under his leadership. So we look forward to what the Lord has to say to us through him every year at the convocation on that Sunday. God bless. God bless. On that Friday morning, and we have one of the bishops out of Louisiana that will be our speaker that morning, Bishop Alfonso Benson. Will be our speaker to challenge, challenge uh, the candidates to be ordained and also be communion. And we want to fill the place of fill the place of Friday morning. All right. Someone wanted to know what time the banquet it would be at 4 p.m. 4 p.m. on July the 13th. Start seating at 3 p.m. So make sure you get your ticket before they all go. You're running out of tickets. 
announce that by the first part of next week to all uh, leaders of the jurisdiction, you're going to receive an invitation regarding a very important conference call regarding the convocation. And uh, Bishop is also want us to emphasize this. We need to walk the strategic plan, not just put it on the shelf. And so he would like to see in that day session, when we go into breakout groups, want to see what have we been doing that is aligned to the strategic plan. Because you would like to see yourself again, right? Is that right? The plans that you put on paper, the worst thing you can do is to put it on the shelf and don't walk. We're going to walk the talk. And so in the convocation, you're going to see some celebration and some more in-depth planning on putting legs on the strategic plan. So uh, uh, we're excited about what God is doing in the jurisdiction. And make that your vacation to come to the Holy Convocation. Yeah. God bless you. Uh, last thing, I also want you to know that we have a final major rehearsal. We have a small rehearsal, but our major rehearsal will be July the 20th. July, we need choir members. I would love to see a hundred voice choir for the state convocation. And it's possible. It's possible. So all of y'all sitting up there, amen. We love you. We want you to sing in the state choir. We can make that last rehearsal July the 20th at 11 a.m. Amen. It's more Amen. I want you to put those hands together and let's receive the first lady of the second jurisdiction of Arkansas, none other than Lady Joyce Anderson. Come on, give God praise for her.
you know, we, we hear so much about famous people. This one did this and this one did that. I'm going to tell you a little bit about me tonight. <laughs> I was saved at a young age, still saved. I'm going to do it quick because we don't have a lot of time. And uh, they taught us no matter how saved people back in the day. We marry who we want to now. Don't bother when we get in trouble. They, just, they slip it on us. Then when they get in trouble, want us to help them. Don't But anyway, I'll beg you to teach. And I was going with Bishop. He was Frank then. Still Frank, but he's a little Frank. <laughs> <laughs> and we fell in love and all this. We were dating. And I decided I wanted to be sanctified. I was raised in sanctified church. I decided I wanted to be sanctified. And I told him, and I, I, or I told my pastor I was going to get saved. The Lord, he started giving me. And I told him I had his boyfriend, but I don't know if he going to get saved or not. But my pastor told me, y'all listen to your pastor if he's right. <laughs> he told me, get, let him go and get saved. And if he's for you, now you get saved. If he's for you, he'll get saved. And as a who is this Steve Harvey say, you can make a man do what you want him to do. <laughs> Don't be grumbling. 
humongous. And all that, do what you got to do. Woo, Jesus. And I want you to know I got, said, okay, she's a first year cosmetic, uh, 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 baby president.
Oh, God, make some bad news. No, you got to get on up. You got to get on up. You got to get on up and get out of here. Praise the great God. And you got to get on up and get out of there with him. A woman rules her home when it comes to the spirits. If you all hump and drunk, don't care about nothing, don't care about how you look, don't care about how your house looks, what your husband got to go teach you about? Because he's going to be, you, I pray every day, Lord, let me have the right spirit so my husband can go out and do his job in the way you have him to do it. I, I ask God to let the spirit of peace be on me and calmness. Be on me so my, my husband can do what he need to do and won't be mad all the time and some bad because something I did. And he'll be able to know how to be in treat. You know, if, if you got hell at home, hell gonna be on your mind when you get out. All right. A man, a man of God don't need to have to have no hell at the house. All right. His mind need to be clear. It need to be clean. Focus. He needs to be still in the house of peace. I want my house to be peaceful so when my husband come out to all, all y'all seeing all of y'all, he be glad to get home. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I don't want him to come home and be in the house and come home as hell. I want him to come home and I said, my grandchildren will tell you I think you told you then when he walked in the door, I don't know who's there. I said, I'm a man. That ain't a day. <laughs> he said, came in today. Praise God. And I, I, that's, that's my testimony. And I just want you all to know that when you see me, I'm for the church. I'm not in for just no one particular auxiliary. I'm in the church to be in the church. I love the church. I don't want nobody talking bad about the church. When you show, when you see all this stuff on Facebook, don't show me in the band. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. And most people, they don't show us. You on there doing something, they got no business. The pastor, his wife, the first one they gonna bring it to. You know to show you that what's going on. It's the truth. And some of it's shameful, very shameful. Very shameful. There we go. There we go. Y'all, we got to get a hold of ourselves. Hold ourselves. And every, when you, when you uh, video, don't video everybody. Some of this stuff don't need to be told. Please, hold up. You don't tell everything bad at your house. You don't send no bitch out of the bad stuff at your house. You send the best meal you cook. So do the same thing about the church. Teach my love. I don't even care what I told my grandson to take mine off. I, I got enough to talk about and worry about and think about it without what you did for breakfast. <laughs> I didn't have time to talk about it. My man don't work out. My man works out. What can I do for the young folks? For a young woman that don't know how to take care of herself. Yeah. What can I do for a young woman who don't know how to cook? What can I do for a young woman who don't know how to act in front of a man? What can I do? Yeah. That's what my mind is But when you get ready to go over, you, you let me know. But when it comes to all this other mess, no, I don't want to know. Now that's a minister's wife. Yeah. That's a wife just up doing something. Good luck. We, 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 we kind of special. It ain't no anything. We don't just do anything. But she, right. we, we can help if you would let us. She's going to read our purpose. And if you uh, need to, want, want a copy, you can get it. God bless you, mother. Yeah. 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 And all the ministers' wives, elders' wives, and pastors' wives, will you please stand? The Arkansas Second Jurisdiction Minister's Wife Statement of Purpose, Mission, Goal, and Plan of Action for Ministry. The purpose of the Minister's Wife Circle is to help Minister's Wife become more effective in the ministry. And to help develop Minister's Wives into leaders for the overall work of the Lord. To teach Minister's Wives their roles in today's world. To emphasize unity 
and teamwork in the ministry. Our plan of action involves the minister, the wife, and the family. Our mission is to provide support, fellowship, and training. Our goal is to help ministers' wives grow spiritually, to teach ministers' wives how to assist their husbands, to train ministers' wives for the ministry, to encourage ministers' wives to be servants to all, to promote fellowship and unity, to equip ministers' wives for better communication, growth, and fellowship. Why do we do what we do? For the excellence and growth of the ministry. Ministers' wives, will you help me say this? We are equipped for ministry. And we are ready to serve the people of God. God bless you. Hey man, you all just help me sing this song. You don't know like I know. Jesus. 
Hannah and to my own companion, Elder Hershey Morton. Woo, Jesus. I love the Lord. I love the Lord with all my heart. See, you done brought me from a mighty long way. You see, the devil tried to take my mind about two years ago. He had me sitting in a dark room. I didn't want to talk to nobody. He had me, make, he had me feeling like that didn't nobody love me. Oh, Lord Jesus. I told my husband, I said, don't tell nobody that I'm sitting in this dark room and that I'm I was nervous all in my stomach. All my nerves were so bad. But I was reading the Bible. And I was saying, Lord, I need you. Lord, I can't make it without you. Lord, I got to help you. You see, the devil don't want you to tell you nobody what you're going through. But I began. I said, Lord, I need some help. Me and my husband, we was praying. But it seemed like that wasn't getting nowhere. And the Lord told me to call. And I called a friend, I called an evangelist, and she told me, she said, yeah, I got time to pray with you. She told me, the devil's finna get out of your house. She told me, the devil's finna get out of your life. She told me to open up both of my doors, all of my doors. I opened up my front door, I opened up my back door, I opened up my den door. Thank <laughs> you. 
You need to get holy. I tell you what, God began to talk to me, mother. He began to tell me, I got need for you. And when I was out there in the world, and I had a cup in my, in my hand, and the Lord would begin to tell me that I need you, and I began to look at everybody out there. I was at a horse ride, and I began to look at everybody. And I said, Lord, what if we all were saved? Lord, what if all these people was living for you? And I tell you what, mother, it wasn't too much longer. I went to church. I told my husband, I said, I'm not drinking no more. I told him I'm not smoking no more. church. See, ain't nothing like being in church and living for God. But if you don't live for God, you need to be holy. Oh my God, my God, my God. And God began to stir me up. And God, I flicked my back. I hurt my back. So I had to get off work. And I tell you what, God had me at that house. And the devil was saying, where are your friends at now? Don't nobody care about you. But God began to tell me, you need to get in the word. And he began to tell me that I need to pray. He told me, because I got need for you. And I began to start praying. I started getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Praying to God. Getting on my knees. Crying out to God. Telling God. I can stay there all night, 
But I tell you what, since I done got in the church, I'm in love with God. I stay in my word so much. My husband begin to tell me, you still read the Bible? I said, yes, I am. I want something from God. That man can't give me. I need all that I can get from God. See, I got a hunger for God. You got to have a hunger for God. You got to want God. He said, I know about your heart. He said, I know about your inner man. And he began to tell me that I was somebody special. He began to even tell me that I was beautiful. Because there was one time I felt like I was ugly. There was one time I felt like I was nothing. But God began to shake me. God began to mold me.
Y'all pray for me, because I'm running for God. Saints, that same accusation. 
you. He's got it against you. He's saying the only reason they serving you because you're giving them all this stuff. They pray and say God will provide. They ask you for this and God do it. And he said that's the only reason. He's not going, is he serving you for naught? Are you not doing nothing for him? Huh, Jesus. That was the accusation. Satan got busy and took everything. But my thing was, if I can go to the 19th or 20th verse, and I, I, I began to read that and I asked myself a question. What made Job worship? When you look at the 19th verse, Job had went through all of this. And the 19th verse say he when, when all the servants, when they, when they, there was always one, there's always somebody gonna come tell you some bad news. But when they all got through telling their bad news, the scripture says, Job rose. He ran his mouth. In other words, he tore his clothes off of him. Then he shaved his head. And I'm going like, why did he do all of that? That's a sign of deep sorrow. That's a sign that I'm going through. So Job didn't act like he wasn't going through. He was a perfect and upright man, but he didn't act like it didn't bother him. Come on now, don't tell me when you have trouble, it don't bother you. When you got trouble, you get upset. When you got trouble, you want to say some things.
to pray. Pray. Talking to God. You must always, it says, offer a devout petition. A devout petition. A devout petition before God. You got to go before God in the right way. You can't go to God any kind of way. Not at all. You got to bring yourself down. Humble yourself. When you do that, the Lord will come in. He'll answer all of your prayers. Because you see, being a minister's wife, it's not easy. You sit up in the church and they say, you think, oh, she's a minister's wife. She's a minister's wife. Oh, they treat her so well. They talk about her so good. Yeah, they might do that in front of you. <laughs> Oh, 
second jurisdiction in this position. Amen. And we truly are praying. Amen. And God take us higher. Is that your prayer to go higher? Amen. I heard you. Sister Gordon, you said as God take us higher, make sure we stay humble. Amen. I don't care what kind of cord you have on your neck. I don't care what kind of, amen, position, amen, you're in. Amen. If you can't serve your leaders, you've gotten too high. If you can't be obedient, you've gotten too high. Amen, amen. It, it, it does not, amen, lower you to be obedient, amen. It just, I found out it only blesses you. And listen, inasmuch as you have done it to the least of these, when you're being mistreated, amen, for being humble, amen, just remember, I'm one of the least ones. Just say to yourself, say, I'm one of the least ones. Amen. And God has a promise, amen, that he's going to protect even the least of these. Amen. 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 Let's give another hand for our bishop. Amen. amen. I want to thank you, each and every superintendent, amen, that has supported this meeting. Amen. We cannot do it without you. Amen. You may not have heard from us as much, amen, this year, but I want to let you know, and I've tried to get to every individual one and let you know that we appreciate your support, amen. We appreciate every open door, amen. Amen, and we cannot do it without you, but we're looking forward to go higher, amen. Amen, amen. If there are no more announcements, hey. <coughs> Those are uh, sheets that we had prepared for the minister's life, purpose, and all. Anybody want one of those minister's life or two minister's life, I have something to give them. Just one announcement real quick. Uh, 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 there were several envelopes that was handed out the first part of the year, amen, in support and partnering with the jurisdiction. And there's several of them that are still out, amen, at this time. As soon as you can, amen, maybe during the women's convention, amen, we'll have the banquet and several opportunities, even if doing, doing the convocation the first week of the convocation. Please get those in, amen. You took them, amen. Uh, you took them, amen, uh, saying that you would. Amen. Uh, and so, amen. As soon as you get those back in, it was a hundred dollars, amen, gift that we will partner with the jurisdiction. Get those back in, and several of them are still out. Amen. 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 How many amen are ready to go higher in the Lord? Let's give the Lord a hand of praise for us. the greatest A, amen, president of the whole wide world. Let's go. It doesn't be all right if you were doing it for me. But let's do it, amen, for the greatest A, president. Oh, say amen again for our youth leader. Say amen again for our Sunday school, amen. Superintendent, amen for our uh, music president, Pastor Ron. God bless you, God bless you. And for our minister's wise president. And a one that's often overlooked, our usher president in the back, Deacon Melvin Furlow. And our evangelism president, Evangelist Scott, amen. Listen, it takes so much, amen. You, you, you may think, amen, that it's easy, amen, for those, amen, that are waiting on deck. But I tell you, it's a different story when you arrive. Amen. amen. Ask God and let God lead you into what you're running for, amen. Amen, amen. Let, why don't you stand? We're going to be dismissed.
because God is in control, a church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. Service times are Sunday morning prayer and Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 11 a.m. Sunday evening Pentecostal service, 7 p.m. Midweek service, Thursday, 7 p.m.